produce a wormhole right here in front of me that's pink and swirling and sparkly and I will believe in science. How's that? <laughs> Explicate this here and I'm certainly not um, a quantum physicist and I presume that you're not. One of the benefits of studying at Oxford is that uh, one of my good friends who I went for coffee with the other day uh, who just received his master's in physics with the best grade in the whole university and I was able to talk to him for a very long time about quantum mechanics. <laughs> and oh, my friend. Oh, I don't have direct empirical evidence as an empiricist, as a skeptic. No, but I talked to my friend who has a master's and he's got very good grades in quantum physics. These people are a joke, right? This is why it was absolutely excellent when when uh, uh, Chris called out Matt Dillahunty for this exact same BS move. Look, I, I know a lot of guys, okay? I, know, I got a lot of big brothers. They've studied this stuff for a long time. I know some dudes, man, okay? And they know some stuff, and they also know some people who know some stuff. So you want to bring this at me? Uh, I know some people. I talked to a friend of mine who studied quantum physics. We had coffee. We talked for a couple hours for a long time about the law. We talked for a long time. So I, I learned a lot in that two hour coffee shop talk about quantum physics. And, and he says, he says, uh, he's from Oxford. He says that uh, this paper in uh, 2015 debunked the 1965 paper. Now, I don't know anything about this from empirical data, but my friend said that just blew my mind by showing me exactly how to hold on to the principle of sufficient reason is what undermines he current blew, scientific understanding. The, he, he, your coffee shop conversation and your friend blowing your mind has nothing to do with the debate. Literally has no place in a debate. Uh, I th is this what they teach people at, where's he at? Oxford, Cambridge? This is, I thought Oxford was the hallowed halls of the greatest debaters of all time. Is this what they're putting out? Is that the, this is the best and the brightest of Oxford? Is a person who makes an appeal to his coffee shop bro? Can you imagine if I was in a debate with an atheist and I said, look, I don't know about science, okay? Uh, but I believe in creation because I have a friend and, and we went to school, bro. And like we went to call, we went to, to coffee after a, a Bible study. And like he took all these science classes uh, and uh, like he said, uh, like he got A's, okay? He got A's and he said that like the Bible has science, okay? And he studied, dude. Like he has a lot of books in his library. Could you imagine if I brought that to a debate? situation in which you actually need to kill an animal in order to survive that suffering becomes necessary and you're justified in inflict yeah but do you see how ambiguous so this is a philosophical noob right who doesn't understand that the idea of what's justified or what's needed at the time and all their situationist ethics you could justify anything right oh well i'm i i'm setting up my empire on my my special little saint james island i need a trove of a harem of sex slaves and I need those sex slaves to set up my empire. So I need it in this time, in this moment, at this specific situation. I need that. It's needed, bro. Flicting it. Uh, there's, there's not a situation. By the way, I talked to a guy at a coffee shop who has read a lot, dude. And he said that it's it, there's really good arguments for setting up your uh, harem sex cult on an island. Trust me, dude, there's a lot of good arguments for that. And I, because I talked to a guy for about two hours over coffee over that. If you were in a situation where the only way for you to survive would be to kill another human being, I think that you're probably justified in doing that and it would be a form of self defense, right? So I do think that the analyses would be the same. I think that perhaps we would, you know, I can see from your facial expression. Yeah, but I, I mean, I'm really convinced that my genetic lineage is super superior. Like it's better than everybody's, right? Like it's going to be really solid in the future world where we have a lot of debates and there's a lot of, you know, uh, vaporwave children out there in the future. And so when I create my sex, I really need the harem to set up my sex cult just to uh, procreate and repopulate the earth, right? I have the moonraker option ready. That's what I, that's my paradigm, I'm the moonraker option. I want to depopulate the earth and I want to reseed the earth as the new Adam 
with all of my descendants in a harem of supermodels. And I've chosen as the uh, best method to achieve that, creating a sex cult on a island in, uh, you know, the Virgin Islands. And that sex cult is going to repopulate the earth with uh, the best seed possible. And that's the best for all of you guys out there too. Don't you understand? that? I just want the best for you. And the best thing for you guys is to let me and my empire have the world. Don't you guys see that that's what's best for all of us, especially me? And look, I, that's what I need to do right now. I, I need it, man. Bro, I need this. I need this. I need this, Cosmic. We will be eating animals, Cosmic, I'm sorry, uh, because I, I like animals. And, and I'm going to reduce animal suffering by um, eating all, eating them all, right? Because the more of them that I eat, when they cease to exist, they don't suffer anymore. So I'm reducing the animal suffering by eating them. Explain how there's an ought at all. Uh, I've heard a lot of ethical posturing, uh, high uh, moral high ground posturing, which the atheists love this. Have you noticed that the atheists... Kind of like Pharisees, even though Pharisees were religious. You notice the atheists love to tout their higher morals. Like, bro, we all know atheists are a bunch of coomers, dude. <laughs> like, we know you. We don't think you have higher morals. You're not, but you're not fooling anybody with this moral posturing that you have the higher. Oh, I'm so sophisticated. I'm so humane. I'm so tolerant. Again, what? did democide do in the 20th century right the atheist regimes what's the most deadly thing in the 20th century democide via atheist governments sorry that's not very humane is it no uh this whole position is totally arbitrary totally ad hoc and i really wish i'm, I'm hoping i think the uh, cross-examination is coming out i hope that trent calls him out on this i hope trent blows that horn Calls him out. Put that cheesecake down, Trent. Put that cheesecake down. Now. Blow that horn and call him out. Uh, but I also want people to know that the cross-examiner is allowed to interrupt and move the flow of the argument as he... Remember when I was allowed to interrupt Dr. Shabir Ali? And then when we nailed him in the cross-examination, when he melted down... And all the Muslims, you're not allowed to talk. You're not. Why you interrupt? Bro, it said at the beginning of the debate, you can interrupt. What are you talking about? We already know where this goofy thing is going, don't we? In Voltaire's novel, Candide, Here we go. there is a shipwreck in which... Uh, if I just present the problem of evil for the 5,000th time... Candide and Pangloss and their friend Jacques are, are shipwrecked in the harbor of... Has nobody surpassed Reddit tier stuff? Like, even at this PhD level? This is Reddit tier stuff. I mean, it's like... <sighs> but does anyone here really want to claim that evil does not exist? So I don't think we've heard any good reason to think that God does not exist. Indeed, the theist is not committed to Leibniz's claim that the... Um, actually, don't a lot of atheists believe that evil does not actually exist? So that was a weird move. Um, Dr. Craig, I, that was not a very good argument. Uh, why do we keep appealing to, does anybody really want to say this? Don't we all agree on this? Does anybody, don't we all believe that there's some kind of evil? Nobody really wants to deny there's evil. These are all fallacies, by the way, <laughs> like just appealing to, I mean, you could use that for a rhetorical device in a debate, but that's a t another uh, terrible argument. That this is the... Um, if you could have God grow some new limbs of amputees of soldiers in the Iraq war, Christian soldiers with Christian families praying for them to be healed, I would seriously consider that and changing my mind. So far, this has not happened, not even once. Well, my response to this is, first of all, uh, this comes up in Jesus's ministry, right? So there's a point where the Pharisees say, if you are who you say you are, then uh, do what we say, and then we'll believe in you. If you do the miracles that uh, you know we come up with, maybe... Mm, you know, float around or something, right? Uh, and Jesus says, 
no, actually, you won't believe, right? And then he, he gives the story of uh, uh, the of Abraham's bosom, right? And the, so the guy dies, and he goes to Abraham's bosom, and he says, "Lord, uh, I, I'm here in this uh, horrible place. Let me go back and tell my brethren uh, about you know the afterlife, because then they'll believe." And what does Jesus say? Does he say, oh, yes, if we could just present enough evidence of resurrections, if we could just pile up enough evidentiary proofs, evidentiary data, then maybe they'll believe. No, Jesus says, if they don't believe Moses and the prophets, neither will they believe if someone rise from the dead. And I'll tell you what, Michio, if you produce a wormhole that I could step through and become my own sci-fi God, then I'll believe in science. Produce a wormhole right here in front of me that's pink and swirling and sparkly, and I will believe in science. How's that? Man, I feel, I feel sorry for people. I mean, can you imagine falling for this, this speech? This is such bullshit, dude. This is such a, a sales pitch. Like, you can't see through this. This is ridiculous. Like, why? If the atheist worldview is true, all the shit he's saying is totally meaningless. It doesn't It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't matter. It's nothing. <laughs> Remember the vegan atheist from a few months ago who literally said that there's nothing wrong with... Uh, Fallacies. You, you can commit any informal fallacy you want in a debate and you, you can still win. What? I mean, it, it's so dumb and so absurd that it doesn't even deserve a response. Everybody wants to play this game of like, who can tally up the most number of scientists on their side? <laughs> like, oh yeah, atheists? Well, I, my cousin knows a dude who's a biologist and he's a theist boom right so what it wouldn't matter if every scientist in the world was an atheist literally right? richard dawkins please to the ring well of course i'm over here i'm just trying to suck the last drip of blood from the baby bottle <laughs> My colleague, Peter Atkins, mm. whose works I recommend to you, I think that it's high time that a sign- I am a vampire. I just wanted to suckle the last drop of life from the baby bottle I suckled before this conference, which was filled with baby's blood. Scientist won the Nobel Prize for Literature. I was, I was doing a seance and calling upon my mentor and my patron, Lord Vlad the Impaler. And he gave me some good scientific arguments before the debate. And Peter Atkins would be my nominee for that. He was once invited to give a lecture in Windsor Castle, which, as you know, is one of the homes of the British monarch. Oh. And at the end of... We have some wonderful, wonderful, delightful, delectable rituals underneath Windsor Castle. Yes, 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 yes my lord. Windsor Castle. You must, you must all come visit sometime on the winter solstice, perhaps. We shall find you there. Look for me in a purple robe. We humans are obsessed with purpose. It seems perfectly natural when we're presented with an object to say, what's it for? It starts in childhood. Uh, the psychologist Deborah Kellerman has investigated this very interestingly with children, offering them a question like, what? Yes, I love, I love stories of children. <sighs> something as complicated as a heart, even a brain. Who would have thought that by the laws of physics, unaided, unviolated, just filtered through this brilliant process of natural selection, evolution by natural selection, that the blind laws of physics could produce the illusion of design? Um, this is another move that you hear these people make, which is they'll do this thing where they say... Uh, 
Centuries ago, we thought that uh, Bishop Butler uh, uh, argued for design and the, the complexity of life required that there be some highly intelligent designer. We now know. 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 You just sort of fly past any actual proof of the we now know. And you just say, we now know. <laughs> this constitutes an argument, apparently, right? You just say, we now know, right? Uh, we used to believe that God exists. We now know that, that he doesn't. <laughs> Case closed. It's over, dude. Boom. Debate over, right? We now know. Oh, we now know. We now know. Uh, says who? <laughs> what? And by the way, the same guys that say, we now know will also, within 10 years, reverse their positions on the previous we now know. I'm not joking. There's Dawkins is on tape doing this, where he said, and I've pointed out many, many times, right? Our rest in peace, our friend Chris, many, many years ago, pointed this out. Um, he used to have the clip. I don't know if the clip is still on YouTube or not, but uh, the junk DNA mistake, right? 